Hey everyone, it's Flackfire. Battlefield 1 shipped with a significant number of game modes. Team Deathmatch, Domination, Rush, War Pigeons, the franchise staple Conquest, and the even larger Operations. Since launch, DICE has added two more game modes, Frontlines and Supply Drop. Now, Frontlines was very well received. The game mode blended Conquest and Rush into a grueling tug-of-war match, which embodied the true nature of World War I fighting. It did so well, DICE brought it to several vanilla maps and made it available to everyone. Unfortunately, Supply Drop received a less enthusiastic response. Developers have since announced another game mode is coming to Battlefield 1 with the next DLC, Turning Tides. It's called Conquest Assault, and it gives the defending team control of every objective, while the other has to take the objectives by force. It mirrors the goal of the actual amphibious attacks featured in the DLC, like Cape Hellas and the Zeburga Raid. But is there really room for more game modes in Battlefield 1? Personally, I think Conquest Assault is a great idea. It fits the aforementioned maps perfectly, and it would make Albion a thousand times better. But beyond this, I don't think Battlefield 1 needs more game modes. While I'd still love to see a naval superiority or an air superiority mode, Battlefield 1's player base isn't really getting any larger. Divvying up the player base with more modes won't help either. I'd rather DICE put those resources and time into improving the other components of the game's DLC. So, where should that effort go? Well, I polled a few hundred of you guys on Twitter asking what you valued most in a DLC aside from maps, and the results were striking. 65% of respondents voted for weapons. Behemoths and game modes were tied at 13%, and bringing up the rear were vehicles at just 9%. It's evident that, aside from maps, the overwhelming majority of Battlefield 1 players are most interested in new weapons. And this isn't surprising. It's probably a large part of the reason In the Name of the Tsar was so favorably received. The DLC added 11 new weapons, compared to just 6 in They Shall Not Pass. Now, World War 1 saw some of the most interesting and unique prototype weapon developments in the history of warfare. Players connect with guns like the SMG-08 and the infamous Hell Regal on a deeper level. We'll never be able to hold those weapons in our own hands, and we often have an innate curiosity to understand how those guns work. Battlefield 1's weapons double down on this angle since many have never been featured in a video game before. Obscure weapons like the Ribirola will pique our interest much more than a video game staple like the Thompson SMG. In fact, most of the talk around Battlefield 1's next DLC, Turning Tides, is focused on the expansion's weapons. Players are already talking about which of the guns in the future DLC interest them the most. Personally, when I think of Battlefield 1's expansions, I'm particularly interested in behemoths for the same reason I'm interested in weapons. We've had a pretty solid offering of weapons in the expansion so far. In the Name of the Tsar was a pleasant surprise, featuring more than its fair share of new guns. The DLCs also added several new vehicles, like the saint Germain tank, Poodle off Garford, and the Wileider landing craft. Sadly, we've yet to see a new behemoth, aside from the monstrous Char 2C, which was added with They Shall Not Pass. In previous videos, I've suggested a number of other possible behemoths for Battlefield 1, ranging from the British M-Class submarine to the German Kavagen. Behemoths play an important role in Battlefield 1's most popular game mode, Conquest. They help stabilize teams in lopsided games and provide a new experience and challenge. Although I rarely get to use them, they are fun to fight against, and their sight makes them pretty awe-inspiring. I just don't get the same feeling from new game modes. I was disappointed we didn't see a new behemoth with In the Name of the Tsar, and we aren't expecting another with Turning Tides either. Perhaps they're too much of a drain on resources, I don't really know. And that's just it. DICE has limited time and limited resources. With just one more DLC on deck for Battlefield 1 after Turning Tides, what do you think DICE should focus on for Apocalypse? Personally, I'd be happy to see more guns or a behemoth instead of another game mode. But what do you think? Should they add more game modes? Or what should they focus on instead? Tell me in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, share on social media like Facebook and Twitter, and be sure to subscribe.
To take your Battlefield 1 game to the next level, check out the Battlefield 1 Ultimate Utility app with a link in the video description below. As always, thanks for watching.